The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is a continuation of the Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, for Trinity Sunday, reading from Genesis 1, looking at the creation account further. Today we're looking at days 5 and 6 of the creation. And God said, <clears throat> Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing with which the water teems, according to their kinds, and every winged bird, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. My dear friends in Christ, a couple days ago, Alexander told me that what he'd like to do is he'd like me to help him build a butcher block island for his apartment on which he can prepare his meals. And this butcher block island, I think he wants it to be something like about two feet by five feet. And on the bottom, he wants there to be a space for his microwave and for uh, his mini refrigerator. He thinks that maybe what he could do is come home around the 4th of July, spend a couple extra days here, and maybe during that time we'd be able to get this project done. Right now I'm kind of waiting for him. He said he's going to give me a rough drawing of what he would like. And it's kind of important that he gets that to me pretty quick if we're really thinking about doing this because, well, the 4th of July is coming up really quickly. And when I do woodworking projects, which I really love to do but don't do often enough really, I like to spend a good bit of time planning and thinking over how everything is going to go before I would ever go to the store and get lumber or, or ever even think about getting my woodworking tools out. And well, maybe you know that phrase that says measure twice, cut once. And for that matter, measuring three or four times isn't necessarily a bad idea unless you've got a lot, of, a lot of extra wood. Well, today, we're looking at the fifth and sixth days of creation. And, well, it's kind of easy to just simply read. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. Well, and then after that, then Scripture just simply says, and it was so. Well, when I think about how much time I would put into planning of any major or bigger project, woodworking project that I would do. When I think about how much time I put into planning for that, I may wonder, you may wonder how much time God put into planning for his creation before 
He made the heavens and the earth, and before he got working on his creation. Well, we might wonder about those things, but well, what does the Bible tells us? It tells us. It just tells us, well, on this fifth day, what God did is God made the fish and all of the sea creatures. And every once in a while, well, what we hear about is scientists who found this new sea creature that they found down in the depths of the ocean that they'd never seen before. Well, all these sea creatures. On that same day, God made all the birds and, well, really the word there says winged creatures, which would include winged insects, of course, flying insects, of course. On the sixth day, what God did is God made all the creatures on the land. And now just think about the number of different creatures that God made on those two days. Sea creatures, flying creatures, and land animals. All of those things that God made on those days. And now, how much time would God's have spent in his drawing room preparing for all of those creatures, designing them? Well, the Apostle Peter does say, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. God is God, so he could have spent time planning for those different things. Or maybe on the fifth and sixth day of creation, what God all of a sudden kind of did is said, hmm, I like sea creatures and flying creatures and land animals. I think I'll make some and said, let there be, and there was. He wouldn't have had to have put in that huge amount of time planning like I was talking about. Well, God created all of those creatures, it says, according to their kinds. That's the same as it was with the plants and the vegetation. It wasn't that God made simple creatures that over many, many years ended up developing into more complex creatures. God did make all or most of the create creatures that he made with the ability to adapt and to change, but as I've said before, that that was always just within the kind or the species of the creature. And there wasn't some sort of a simple organism that was there at the beginning that after a long, long time ended up developing into human beings. But everything was just as God wanted it to be. Just as God wanted it to be, our reading says, and God saw that it was good. And when God says good, it means perfect. There wasn't a single flaw in any of his creation, of any, in any of his creatures. When I plan a woodworking project, oftentimes my plans may have to change Oh, for different reasons to make things fit together right, or, or maybe because I've made a mistake. And, and as I said, we don't know how much time, if any, God would have spent on his designing all of those different animals. And, and again, just think of how many creatures there are out there, how different they are, and how God makes them all work. God's wisdom is something that is so obvious. Our God amazingly wise. Omniscient is the term that we use for him. All of God's creatures as he created them, all perfect, and there were no recalls, no defects. But the Bible does tell us, well, how much time did he plan for that? We don't know. But the Bible does tell us that God planned for our salvation. Before he ever began creating the world, he planned 
for our salvation. And here we really see the wisdom of our God. The Apostle Peter says, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from our forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world. And the Apostle Paul said, For the God of our Lord Jesus Christ chose us in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Again, I don't know how much time God spent on planning or designing our world and all of the creation creatures in our world. But we do know that our all-wise, omniscient God, he planned for our salvation, and he has the perfect plan. It's Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection. Thank you, our all-wise God, for, for having a plan for our eternal souls. And for wanting us forever with you in heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, when we look at your creation, we see your wisdom, your power, and your love. But we especially see your wisdom, power, and love as we look at your plan for our salvation. Thank you for planning for our salvation, for having a plan for us, and for wanting us to be with you forever in heaven. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always.